What's up guys, Mitch Pelkey back with another episode of Pelk Talk. Some say the best podcast in the world. On today's episode, we have Syracuse University's starting midfielder, Brendan Curry. Curry's a dog, a two-time All-American and has started every game of his career. I can't wait for you guys to get to know him better in this podcast. Don't forget to listen on Spotify and Apple. Enjoy. What's up guys, Mitch Pelkey back with another episode of Pelk Talk. Today, joined by Syracuse starting midi. Brandon Curry. How you doing, Brandon? Doing good. Good, man. Where are you at right now? Are you in Maryland? Yeah, I'm at my house, chilling in my okay. base. What have you been up to? Nothing much. I'm actually watching Billions. That's kind of what okay. I'm doing. I'm on uh, episode 10, season one. There you go. You keeping the stick in your hand? Yeah. Got a little setup in my backyard, so it's pretty much what I've been limited to. But Yeah. You missing the guys at Syracuse? Yeah. Um, we have, you know, our weekly Zoom meetings with the coaches – which are good, but then I think, you know, just catching up during FaceTime I think is even better, you know, and it's just the guys, um, the coaches aren't around. But, you know, definitely the team Zooms are important too, you know, just being on the same page with the coaches in the off season and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So let's start from the beginning, growing up in Lutherville, Maryland, kind of a hotbed for lacrosse with a dad that was a three-time All-American at Syracuse. You know, what was that kind of like? I always thought it was cool. I mean, he was like my favorite, uh, you know, player um, to kind of talk about, you know, with my friends and everything growing up. And then obviously he coached me uh, when I was five years old, uh, all the way up until junior year of high school uh, with okay. club. So that was cool um, for me to have him as my coach. And then obviously I was diehard Syracuse fan growing up, just with him watching all the games. So he was kind of your role model growing up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That was kind of like myself. My dad played UVA, and he was just kind of like the guy I always looked up to. You know, helped me out whenever yeah. I needed it and everything. Yeah, my dad said he knew your dad when I told him I was doing this. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. That's awesome. Wait, so Desco was actually an assistant coach when your dad was on the team, right? Yeah, he was an assistant. Yeah. No, he was... was he like offensive coordinator? Um, I think he was defensive coordinator. He, he okay. played defense at Syracuse, so he was a defensive coordinator. It's pretty crazy how he's been there. That's so weird. Has, does he ever talk to uh, like talk about stories about him and his pop? <laughs> yeah, he actually said my dad's first practice. My dad was in a t- used to play attack in high school, um, and they were doing one on ones. And he picked my dad out of a out of a like out of the attackman because it was like my dad's first practice. And he was like this like big recruit, so he was like, "All right, let's do a one on one for Max." And my dad was like, "Okay, like, just gonna." Like toast him and Desco just back checked him and the stick went flying. You know, <laughs> Welcome to Syracuse. So I was like, Oh my god, that's awesome. That's funny. Your that your pops why I never forgot that. Yeah, you definitely not. So growing up, did you play travel ball? Yeah, I played for Lutherville or uh Towson Town. Where Towson Town? Yeah. So it was like Towson Town, Lutherville, Cockeysville, just like all the towns uh right outside of Baltimore and Baltimore County. And that there was no club, so we'd just play, you know, like every Saturday we have a game against like Lutherville was our big rival back then. So then did you kind of gradu- graduate towards playing with FCA? Yeah. Um, FCA started in when I was going into eighth grade. Um, my dad and, and Coach Kelly at Calvert Hall were the two coaches. So you played with FCA throughout your like whole high school career? Yeah. Up until junior year. So then you attend Calvert Hall. Was that kind of like a hard decision to make? Um, not really. I mean, that's kind of where I wanted to go. Like growing up, I would always, you know, be at the Kelly's house or go to the Calvert Hall games on Friday nights. So it was, that's where I always wanted to go. So that relationship with, with the Kelly family, that kind of started at a, at a young age. Jacob was actually on my first ever lacrosse team. Really? We were on the – we're on the Navy Blue team for Towson Town. So we saw pictures of me and him playing when we were super young. And then there was a team, a soccer team. I think I was maybe seven. Jacob was six. And then Daniel was like four. And he played on our – He played on the team? We were all on the same team. So, yeah, it goes back. So kind of getting to Calvert Hall, you know, kind of that powerhouse school. Were you ever nervous in that first fall? Yeah. I mean, uh, I was – definitely nervous and those the tryouts um you know I remember soccer tryouts my freshman year I was nervous and that wasn't even close to as intense as lacrosse and then 
there's like 150 kids out there for lacrosse and it's just like all like all these guys who you know you grew up for the last like couple years like when I was in sixth seventh eighth grade you know they're still there as seniors Timmy Kelly and them um so it was just cool uh being able to try out but definitely super nervous so kind of keeping it going and in senior year you guys end up winning your first championship since 2012 what was kind of the difference between that season and the three years prior um we were so close those past three years but we just couldn't really like get over the like we made it to the quarterfinals which is like i think the top six teams in the league because the first mm-hmm. two get a bye so then like six then four plays five um and we lost in the quarterfinals every single year my first three and then we actually didn't lose a game that my my senior year that was you know a, like very few teams done that so that was pretty special that we got to do that I, I don't really I, I couldn't really even pinpoint one single thing but we were just so deep I would say like so we deep. had two really good lines the Mitchells came in that year yeah uh, which boosted us a bunch and um they're really good. And we just added a lot of depth to midfield. Um, Jacob won the uh, Marklin C. Kelly Award. So he obviously was a stud that year. And then, you know, we just had so many guys that, you know, are still killing it today. You miss those days at all? Yeah. Definitely senior year of high school is, is a blast. Uh, the peak. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what was it like uh, having Scotty Rogers as your strength and conditioning coach? You know, you kind of see his like presence on social media and everything, just a wild guy. We see this kind of the same way uh, in the workout room. Yeah. I would say he's different uh, in person than he, than he is on social media. Um, he's definitely an acquired taste, but he's the man. And, you know, once you, once you get to know Scotty and once he has your back, there's really no going back for him. Um, he'll be your biggest fan for, you know, until, you know, you stop playing, but, He's a great dude. He's just really good leader and like taught me a lot my senior year about, you know, how to be a captain and everything, um, which is something I'll never forget. And, and just like how influential he was um, in the weight room with Jay, but definitely like leadership and just like having that presence every day in the weight room. I mean, just through social media, he seems like a, like an influential guy kind of going more towards your announcing side. What are your thoughts on like bookers, one liners? Has he always been kind of announcing your games at Coward Hall? Yeah. Booker is like – he's an icon for them. I like – Yeah, for sure. Out and out by Booker, then it's like that was a huge deal. Like, when you know, growing up and if if Booker was doing the game, then it was a huge game. Um, it's just like the – he was the one – I think the one guy that, you know, they – my senior year they started uh, to film and, you know, you could watch the games live. Yeah. Uh, and we'd always go watch, go back, and you know, if you had a if you had a goal or something, you'd always go back and see what Booker had to say about it. <laughs> yeah. If it was hilarious, it was, it was always the best getting shouted out by Booker. I know. I was well, I was actually watching some video the other day. It was like best Booker's one liners of like 2012, oh, yeah. and he said some heinous stuff. <laughs> yeah. I actually just talked to him, or like right after the season ended. Um, my parents were pretty good friends with him. So he just called me up, seeing how I was doing, and it was just – he's just always hilarious. Just will always put a smile on your face. I know. One of my favorite things is uh, when he did, like, after math or, like, after school with Sauce. So funny. <laughs> sauce is yeah. so dumb. <laughs> it was so funny. That is a hilarious video. But so kind of going towards the end of your high school, what was the recruiting process like for you? Um, pretty tough at first, honestly, I, uh, I was pretty injury prone. My freshman and sophomore year, I was just so skinny and tiny. Yeah. Um, broke three ribs, two concussions, always spraining my ankle or something. Um, broke my foot. Uh, it was actually, so, you know, Maverick Showtime. Yeah. Yeah. I was, it was like, my dad was coaching it. So I got to go play probably wouldn't have even gotten invited and then my first practice I'm so nervous it was like my freshman year going into sophomore year so there was all these kids already committed I remember Lucas Quinn was going to Syracuse at that time and he was there Mm -hmm. Ian Laviano at at UVA so there was like all these guys and first practice I break my foot like literally like two hours into getting there 
And my dad's just like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> we drove all the way to Connecticut, and then I just am staying in the dorm. Luckily, I'm with – I was actually – I roomed at Maverick Showtime with Owen Siebold, who – ended up being my best friend at Syracuse and my roommate freshman year. And we didn't even know each other going into Maverick. Wow, and, that's funny. And he was like, um, yeah, like I really want to go to Syracuse. My dad went there. I was like, yeah, me too. Like, that's where I want to go. My dad went there too. And our dads ended up, they played together. And they were both. Oh, really? Time. Yeah. So it was just wow. a crazy turn of events. But yeah, so broke my foot there. And then I, I never really – I didn't really grow in my body until like late junior year. Um, but I'd be, I'd committed to Penn late sophomore year. Um, that, I mean, I, I thought that's where I was going to end up and then I it grew a little bit and then, um, Syracuse ended up reaching out and then it was kind of a no brainer from there, but it was definitely, it's definitely stressful looking back, just, you know, having to call the Penn coaches and everything they did for me and, like, I still respect them to this day. We scrimmage them every year. So I always – I still have a decent relationship with them um, if I saw them. But once Syracuse reached out, it was pretty much – Game over. Uh, yeah. So you'd say it was kind of just traditional recruiting process. You'd play FCA in the summers and fall, and then college coaches would look at you and just kind of give you offers? Yeah, that was, that was pretty much how it went. And then the one of the big ones was NHSLS – which is like the uh, national high school. National high school. Um, and a lot of coaches now, I think they like doing that just because it's a, uh, you play with your high school team. So it's, you know, kids are having to play in the offense instead of kind of just like a showcase type thing where. Yeah. Ball hog type thing. Taking the ball. Yeah. Kind of making that call that you want to commit to Penn. Did you have like a 100% feeling that you're in or, or not really? I actually didn't. I still remember it. I was with my dad and, we were in our living room at our old house and I was like, yeah, I, I want to go there. And he's like, all right, we'll just call them. Cause in the Ivy leagues, it was, it was kind of weird the way they, they do the rec whole recruiting process. Cause you have to get into school and all that stuff. Yeah. You have to have your grades and everything. Um, so I called him and then he actually was like, I was like all pumped up cause I thought I was just gonna, you know, come in on the spot. And he was like, he's like, okay, that's awesome. Uh, well, I'll reach back out to you. Um, the next day or two after I talked to the coaches and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I was like, what did I just do? And then, you know, they ended up calling back and it worked out. But those those couple of seconds, I was just like, uh, uh, okay. I can't even imagine. Yeah. Oh, my God. So then kind of like a year later, you commit to Cuse. You think it was kind of like a relief? Yeah, I would say. Just because – I would always it was kind of your, your dream yeah, forever. I was, I mean, my whole, I was still living in a room where everything was orange and blue. I had posters, pictures of my dad, you know, I wore a Syracuse helmet growing up, up until eighth grade. And then I remember coach Kelly being like, yeah, I don't really think you should keep wearing that during the summer. <laughs> so ended up giving me a Calvin all helmet, but it was just, it's a, it's cool that, you know, me and my dad get this similar experience and similar coaches with uh, Coach Desco and, and Coach Simmons still being around. So kind of graduating from Calvert Hall that senior year, coming out being ranked 49th. Do you think they kind of low-blowed you there or no? No, honestly. I was I was definitely uh, – I think I progressed throughout high school, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I was like a, you know, big blue-chip recruit, like, you know, some of these studs that were coming out of high school. Um no, probably not. It was, it was probably right. Somewhere no. Around. So kind of stepping on campus uh, that fall, your freshman year, did it feel like home from the start? Um, yeah. I mean, there were really no doubts when I, when I went there. Um, you know, me and Owen clicked right away, which was awesome. Um, and then my grade is just really, really close. Um, and yeah. We've been close since, you know, the first week we were there. Um, there was – 20 of us there's not as many now um that usually happens but uh yeah it was you know right away it was just great all the upperclassmen were gonna still have you know from my freshman year i am still i'm really close with some of those seniors and juniors that have graduated which has been like one of the coolest parts about being in in college on a lacrosse team yeah that's awesome so that that first fall like i said what was kind of like that first aha moment 
uh, like you said, that story about your dad, what was kind of like your moment? Like this isn't high school ball anymore. I got to step it up. Um, I don't know if there was a, a, uh, a specific time because our mom or our, my fall, my freshman year actually got cut short because we had the mumps. Really? Yeah. So <laughs> we wake up one morning and it's like a week or two into fall. So like we had bare, we had been doing like sticks and, and, you know, skills and stuff, but nothing like crazy. Um, and we wake up on like a Saturday morning and my roommate has the most, had this like giant thing on the side of his face. So we're like, what in the world? And then we go to the locker room and another kid has the same thing. And we just thought it was like a swollen gland. And, yeah. and we were like, that's so weird that they both have it, but like no one like thought anything of it. So we like go watch film, end up having practice. And then a couple of days later, like another kid gets it. Then like girls on the lacrosse team start to get it. And then it like, everyone's getting tested and it's like a mumps outbreak it's like the first one in like the 1800s and they shut us down like we didn't have fall ball so we were so when did you guys pick the stick back up again after winter break we had like a week after right before thanksgiving break of practice and then no one i mean like there were no depth charts there was nothing until so we pretty January. much started fall ball like when we started in the spring. Like we were so behind my freshman year, um, which like looking back, like if I were an upperclassman or you know like a captain on that that team, like that is tough to do. Like not yeah. fall ball as I much mean, I, like, fall ball kind of stinks. Like you get like a lot done, like playing a lot, but yeah. So we didn't have that at all. My freshman year, we had no fall ball. Yeah, because one, one of my uh, girlfriends that she goes to co college of Charleston and mumps is like huge there. She showed me a picture of this past fall it's and it's brutal. A soft. So nasty. Yeah. So so kind of that fall, did you guys kind of feel that you were um, at, at, at like a loss with not having that fall? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we definitely got really close as a team just because there was nothing else to do except that, like we – we could not even go in the locker room. We couldn't go in the weight room. We couldn't – we had to join a gym. I remember really? me, Owen Seabold, and Nate Solomon joined a gym. And Spencer Small joined a gym, like Gold's Gym in Syracuse. <laughs> and Nate – You four just to, like, driving there like every day? Oh, yeah. Like half our team would just go to a gym – because we, we weren't allowed – our swipe cards wouldn't even work because the mump – like, Syracuse girls had mumps, so we weren't – we were literally, like, exiled on campus. That's crazy. Yeah, so, was, kind of talking about your dad again, you know, was a goal of yours always to chase in your dad's footsteps record-wise? I know, I know you've always wanted to go to Q's, but was always just kind of – was the goal to try to up, up him? People usually ask me that, like, especially my freshman year, I got that a lot. But I would say, like, not even really at all. Um, I still don't really ever think about it. I mean, like, he'll joke with me about certain stuff and, you know, certain, like, accolades or whatever. But that's not really big to him and it's definitely not really that important to me. I would say the one thing that we do go back and forth on is uh, he actually didn't win a championship. Okay. He did it to four Final Fours in two national championship games and didn't win. So if we win these next two years, that'll definitely be the big the Yeah, big that's big. Right. But he would he would he's our biggest fan uh, and he would want it just as much as, as us. So there would as as much as we would joke about it, he would be just as happy as as if he had won one while he was playing. Yeah. What would you say was the most nervous you've ever been for a college game? Probably my first game my first scrimmage against Yale my freshman year without having a fall ball. We scrimmaged. Oh, was that in January? Yeah, with, you know, Ben Reeves on the team. Like, they were, like, legit. That that might have been the year they won the national championship, actually. But, um, yeah, I think it was. But yeah, I was – that was definitely the most nerve-wracking. You were nervous? Oh, yeah. When did it, it kind of go away after minutes of playing? Yeah. Uh, you know, after the first run – 
you know, the first – it's always for me the first catch and throw, the first check. You know, if, if you get just the first contact and then you're kind of just – and your adrenaline starts going. You know, in the Dome, it's such a cool experience because, you know, it's like a – like you, you guys play in the football stadium, so it's like mm-hmm. – it's big and the dome just has like so much history in it that you know you just get like swallowed up in it and then you almost just like black out you don't even remember like yeah, the warm up yeah. you're looking back you're like well that was a blur so I think that you know that atmosphere helps and especially when the fans are getting into it in the dome it gets pretty loud so the nerves kind of go away with the adrenaline well, yeah, what were your what were your kind of thoughts on – I know Desco obviously runs like a different program than the rest of like Division I um, with, the, with the rules and everything. And not saying it's, it's a bad thing, but was that ever a shock to you coming from um, Calvert Hall with, with BK and all his rules? Yeah, I would say no because that's kind of how my dad um, would have preferred me and definitely warned me of that. The program and like, you know, in practice, it's definitely gotten more structured. Um, we just got a young, uh, coach March who came in and, and changed a lot of stuff, you know, culturally and, and I'm sure, you know, within the staff, but he's just done a really good job of making us more disciplined, which is something I thought we really needed. Um, you know, just keeping everyone more focused, but, and then, you know, off the field, it's kind of, you live and you learn. There's not like very strict rules, not, you know, there's no like 24 hour rule before practice or anything like that. Um, so they make you grow up really fast and, you know, some kids get swallowed up by it and, you know, they, it's tough for them to turn back once they get into the habit of some things. But, um, you know, if you really, cause they, they do care about you and, you know, coach Simmons is director of lacrosse operations. Um, but he's actually like much more than that to a lot of the players. He's someone who you like go talk to. He's like the disciplinarian of off field stuff. Um, yeah. So, you know, once you have a really good relationship with Coach Simi, um, he just teaches you a lot about on and off the field stuff, which has been huge for a lot of people. So hitting that OT game winner against Duke last year, how surreal of a moment was that for you? Yeah, that was awesome. I was actually I, – I, like, thinking back on that game, I was, I think, like 0 for 11 shooting. Oh, the whole game? Oh, yeah, before that. And I was just like, I was melting. Like I could not hit the broadside of a barn that, that <laughs> like, actually, I don't even think he made a save. I just think that. Couldn't hit the cage. I just literally was just spraying the ball. Um, and I remember Austin Fusco, who, you know, one of my best friends, and he was a captain, two-year captain. He's just a great dude. Um, just kept looking at him and being like, keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. I was like, Ugh. All right. I mean, if you guys want me to, um, I was, and then overtime, first overtime we score, or uh, I took a shot lefty underhand and it went right into the goalie stick and they really? up the left side, went running down. I, I literally had my hands on top of my head was watching the play happen and Drake Porter made an, a sick save. And I was like, okay, thank God. <laughs> and then, uh, and then it, it, it literally was a blur. Like, I don't even know why it ended up down at their, like, bottom side of the field. Like, I've never – like, it was like me and Nate almost switched spots. Like, he was yeah. up as a midi, and then I ended up to the right. Um, I've never creased over in my life before, so I don't really know where that came from. <clears throat> or why I did that, but I know I, I remember watching, and I, I thought you were going to shoot it off the initial pa- initial catch. Yeah, it, it was literally a blur. Like I've never done that move, like gone underneath that goal line extended since like maybe seventh grade when I played attack. So would you say you're you're a bigger uh, Orioles fan or Ravens fan? Oh, uh, Ravens, for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Diehard Ravens fan. Where else kind of suck. So. I mean, what's it with like the Baltimore guys? And I mean, we got a, obviously a, a lot of Baltimore guys in our team, but it's just like they love it. Like. Oh yeah. What's the yeah. deal? You know, we have two Baltimore kids on the team. Me and Basil Aburn. We get uh, crapped on the whole season just because we're so obnoxious. Like I'm always wearing my Lamar stuff. Baz is always wearing his Raven stuff. So it's like we have a lot of Giants fans too. And they're yeah. obnoxious. Brett Kennedy, huge Giants fan. It's funny just to see how all the different teams, but I remember when we lost to the Titans, we had everyone over at our house. 
and there's just videos of me and Basil just yeah just everyone was just, just, just ruined but yeah so I was kind of doing my research and uh, saw on your SoundCloud you used to make SoundCloud mixes yeah is that something you'll get back into or no I don't know I me and me and my friend Wade Alzer used to do it all the time um and then me and me and Jacob used to do it for Calvert Hall but I don't even know if I know how to do it anymore, if ever. So I must have been really bored back in early high school and middle school. I mean, SoundCloud's like a big thing at QC. You got like Scanlon rapping. What were your thoughts on him <laughs> rapping? Yeah, actually, I don't know if he put anything new while he was at Syracuse, but it's definitely no, funny. No, he put something out like seven months ago. Oh, did he? Yeah. We had, we had two kids. that. So this other kid who's actually not on the team anymore, but he used to make rap. and we would play it at, you know, like a party or a pregame or something. And he would like, it would make his day. He was a freshman. So we'd put it on and he would be so happy that his song was playing <laughs> at, at the pregame with the whole team. But yeah, that, that stuff's always so funny. So kind of fast forward for next season though, is, is the, uh, is the mentality different? Um, not being able to, obviously you guys, when Corona happened, you guys were ranked number one. Um, is the mentality any different coming into next year? Um, I would say uh, we're kind of used to having, I mean, as you know, how I say, but, you know, Syracuse always has a spotlight on them, you know, big school, big program. So, you know, we're kind of used to that, but obviously we haven't been number one in a while, especially, you know, this group of, of seniors and juniors and, and so on. But I think it's just more excited. I think, you know, throughout the, the country, I think everyone's just going to be more excited to play lacrosse, um, which I think will be a good thing. Um, I can only imagine you guys will be the exact same way getting back. Yeah. You know, first fall practice is always exciting, but I think this one will be even more special, um, especially, you know, getting to playoff time next year, but it'll just be a whole nother level of excitement. So I think everyone's kind of going to have that chip on their shoulder thinking that they got chipped, this happened, this happened, this happened. So I think it's just going to be an extra competitive year, which, you know, I always look forward to. Yeah, for sure. So do you think you'll take that fifth year option? Yeah. For sure. That's the plan. Um, still got to figure it out with school and just see if it makes sense. But yeah, I mean, if, if it were solely up to me and there were no other factors, a hundred percent. Yeah. I think everyone's kind of leaning towards that. Yeah. So what, what are the plans for after college? Is, is it straight to the PLL? <laughs> I have no idea. I got, um, I'm a real estate major. So i um, trying to do some internships with that probably won't happen this summer just with everything getting canceled so fast yeah but, um yeah a bunch of my dad's buddies do real estate so that would be the plan there and then see what happens across wise so maybe real estate and then pll in the summer hopefully i mean that would be cool if that ended, all ended up working out but yeah you think you would ever want to go back into coaching like your pops yeah um i think it would be cool you know i think it's a lot more serious now coaching it then you know when my dad was I think he coached for Loyola for a little bit and then okay then the MLL uh, but I think it's more of a time commitment now to have to be like a grad assistant and then also like a full-time job um, but again like if there are no factors I would 100% want to coach and who knows maybe you know when I get older if you know certain things work out I can coach a high school team or you know, I would definitely like to coach like youth, you know, if I have a son and or a daughter and who wants uh, to play lacrosse. Sweet. I like that. So kind of going on to our last section here called quick talk. So yeah. I'm going to hit you with like a quick phrase and hit me with a quick answer. You ready? Yep. All right. Food. Chicken wings. Biggest hack. I don't even know what that means. Biggest like, uh, biggest hack, biggest guy that hacks you up in. in the oh, 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 uh, Brett Kennedy. Okay. Biggest chirper. Uh, Brett Kennedy. If not Syracuse, then. <laughs> Can't answer. Not Calvert Hall, then. No answer. Okay. Midcast all the time or only on the field? Only on the field, strictly. Definitely. Yeah, for, sure. for sure. Would have Calvert Hall four peated this year? Yeah, no doubt. Best college memory? Carolina freshman year. Best teammate you've ever had? Austin Fosco. Funniest guy on the team? Jake Fopp. Okay, Syracuse lacrosse. Coach Simmons. You're 21 now. Where do you see yourself in five years? Back in ball tomorrow, hopefully working. Sweet. Well, thanks, Brandon, for coming on Pelk Talk. I really appreciate it. Where can the fans find you at? 
uh curry 16 on uh twitter and instagram i really appreciate you coming on man yeah it was fun i enjoyed Sweet. that see you man so yeah